Fat Literature with hosts Natalie Handel and Gabrielle David at the Langston News Library. Coming up next on Fat Literature, co-host Shirley Bradley LaFleur and special guest Professor Critic Mary Emma Graham pay tribute to the great American poet Margaret Walker in Rivers of Women featuring visual artist Michael Singletary. Funding for Fat Literature has been provided by the Langston News Community Library and Cultural Center of the Queensboro Public Library and its funders. Additional funding for Fat Literature was also provided by the Intercultural Alliance of Artists and Scholars Incorporated and its funders. Fat Literature's website is made possible in part by Queens Council on the Arts with support through J.P. Morgan Chase Arts and Culture Regrants Program. With special thanks to our individual donors and viewers like you. To be or not to be? That's not the question. You have just been so excited about putting together this project on uh, Margaret Walker. Why don't you tell us a little bit why, why you think it's important to Well, I think Margaret is really one of the pioneers and icons for African-American writers, period. But for the African-American woman, she has really stood out. She has, um, her life has basically been one that identifies with the working woman, the mother, the wife, the artist, and the struggle it takes to do that, as well as being a, 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 an academician mm -hmm. for, for years. I think her struggle has been a very human struggle mm -hmm. in terms of her life, uh, on the job, in the home, the challenge of sickness, uh, just the whole literary world. And uh, her history is very rich. Her relationship uh, with Richard Wright, um, her writing at a young age, having been born in Birmingham mm. and later moving <clears throat> to New Orleans, but also uh, having her father's uh, church sponsor, Langston Hughes, coming there for the first time. Mm when everybody thought his feet of $25 was too much. Her father said, we'll bring him because he belonged. They were uh, African Methodist Episcopal, AME. Mm. So that was very important to keep the culture alive. And I think a lot has not been said about Margaret. True. I, mean, uh, I think we talk about all the other people that are high, higher profile, but none could be higher than Margaret simply because her and she influenced so many young people mm -hmm. in terms of being their instructor, one of whom is here today. Mm -hmm. um, she respected intelligence. She respected history mm -hmm. and our culture's black people. Well, let me ask you something. Because when we take this break, we're gonna introduce um, Mary Emma Graham. Yes. Who worked with Margaret Walker, mm -hmm. who you haven't seen in like over 20 years. Mm -hmm. But I, I wanted you to share with the audience um, if you could remember a few lines from Rivers of Women that why you named this particular program. I did, and I would like to share that. Just a couple of lines, just a, just a taste. Well, I've known women, Rivers of Women. Blue, black, tan, high yellow, blue vein women. River crossing women. Water's deep as the Nile, Mississippi is mud, seaboard and island ocean women, women who ride the waves and balance the tide, swimming women, water walking women, treading water, floating women, going with the flow women, backstroking, jellyfishing, mud crawling women. I know women who've drowned, sinking women who sleep at the bottom of the water. 
And it's a long piece, but I, I thought about people like Margaret uh, being in the bend of that river sometimes when we needed uh, safety. We were talking about how you didn't know that there was a path that Margaret Walker was putting you on. And so through this time um, forward, after meeting her and going to Mississippi, you began getting involved with her work. So just talk a little bit about work, working with her on those last two books and what's compelled you to, to continue on with that legacy? Well, I think that she saw in me uh, a scholar. I had started that path when I was at Northwestern studying under her. And she had great respect for me as a scholar. And if I ever had any questions about it, she reminded me that that was the job that I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I needed to be a scholar. We had enough other people doing other stuff. Oh, and I right. needed to be a scholar. And I heard that, but I think I heard it louder when I went to teach in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And I realized that she could not finish the work that she needed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and she had uh, the Richard Wright book. We mm -hmm. had to do the research for that book. We just mm -hmm. about finished that. She wanted her collected poems to be out. Mm -hmm. This is my century, which was her new and collected poems because we had not seen that kind of poetry since the first volume in 1942 mm -hmm. for my people, which made her famous. Mm -hmm. So we got the collected poems out. And then there were the essays from uh, This Is My Century mm -hmm. uh, was the poetry, but we also, on being female, black, and free, was a specially important volume for her mm -hmm. because she wanted something to say, she wanted to say something to a new generation of women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be her kind of woman in mm -hmm. the 20th century and what does she have to say to other young women emerging who would live into the new century? Mm -hmm. Because she was always, always very fond of saying she was not going to live to see the next century. Mm -hmm. She knew that. Mm -hmm. She knew that very clearly. So by the 1980s, there was work to be done. She mm -hmm. might not live to finish it. So someone had to take over. And clearly, mm -hmm. I was the person assigned to that task. So the two collections of essays are on be in being female, black, and free, and how I wrote Jubilee. Because the journey to that book was important for her. It took her 30 years to write it. Mm. The book was, mm. was in 1966. It was her grandmother's story. It was a great oral history uh, tradition in, 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 in visibility for us. So Margaret really had a lot of work to do and not enough time to do it in. You know, it, it almost sounds like your, your, your relationship with her is almost like to a key to uh, Gwendolyn Brooks. Gwendolyn Brooks, very much like that. I learned by the mm -hmm. time she was really aging and not feeling well, I knew how to finish her sentences. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I read she, that somewhere. I read I that in one give, of your uh, I could articles. Give, I could give her something that I finished and she'd say, did I write that or did you write this? <laughs> because she would give me the beginning of it mm -hmm. and I knew how to finish it because mm -hmm. we needed to get finished. Mm -hmm. We couldn't wait until she felt better mm -hmm. yeah. to get it done. It mm -hmm. needed to be done now. So we started working together and that collaboration was very effective. It was very efficient. 